In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an audio waveform right inside of Adobe After Effects. And I'm going to show you how to make that waveform react to your music. So let's get into it. So once you're inside of Adobe After Effects and you have a brand new composition created, we're first going to begin by creating a new solid. So we'll go layer new solid. Then you want to make sure that the color of this solid is black. So go down to color, select this colored box here and pull this all the way down to black. So six zero should be at the bottom here and then press OK and OK. So you've just created a black solid. Now we're going to go over into effects and presets and we're going to search for waveform and that should come up with audio waveform in the generate folder. We're going to drop audio waveform on top of your black video. And as you can see, that has created this pink line. So straight away, if we play, nothing is going to happen because it's not reacting to a music or an audio file. So we're going to go into our finder and we're just going to drag a audio clip onto After Effects. We're going to drag that into After Effects, drag that onto the composition. And then we'll go back into Black Solid 1. We'll go into Audio Waveform and then we'll go to Audio Layer, select the first one. At the moment, it is Black Solid 1. You want to change that to ES, Black Lies in my example, but if you have a different track, it will say the track name here. And as you can see, the waveform has generated. So if we play this back, you can see that that is now reacting to the music. Of course, though, as you can see, it is a little bit too small at the moment and it's not filling the screen. So we're going to correct that with the settings. So in Audio Waveform, we'll go up to the start point and we'll select this button here. And the start point is the point on the left. So we'll drag this over to the left, just off frame. Then we'll go to the end point, select this icon here, and we'll drag that over to the right, just out of frame. If you wanna make sure that this is perfectly in the center, then you can turn on the proportional grid and make sure that these points perfectly sit on that middle line. Of course, you don't have to though, that's just if you want it to be perfectly in the middle. And then from here, we're going to go down and change some of the other settings. So we've got displayed samples. If we pull this all the way up to a thousand, you can see there's a lot going on. There's a lot of different audio samples there. But if we pull this down to a small number like 10, you can see there's less samples. So the samples are essentially the more samples you have, the more audio waveforms you've got squeezed into that. So as you can see, if I change this to one, well, nothing's happening. So if we change this to two, you can see we've only got the left point, the start point and the end point. So we've got those two samples that are animating. And the more we add in, the more points you're essentially adding into the waveform. So if you want that traditional audio waveform look, then go for something above 200. Then we're going to go up to maximum height and we're going to pull this all the way up. So as you can see, we're starting to see that audio waveform a bit clearly now. At the moment, it is around 4,000. But as you can see, when the bass comes in, it just completely fills the screen. So we need to pull that down. We're going to pull the maximum height down to, let's go 1,000. There you go. That's really starting to get there. Now we'll go down to audio duration. If we pull this down to zero, as you can see, the waveform is going to disappear because there is no duration on the audio duration setting. So let's pull this up just a little bit. Let's go to two. It's going to last a little bit, but we want a little bit less fall off. So we're going to increase that to around 100. And that looks about right. Next is audio offset, and you're going to adjust this if you want the waveform to be out of sync with the audio. But you can also use this if it's not syncing up with the audio for some reason. But mine is in sync with the audio, so I'm going to leave that at zero. Next is thickness, and it does what it says on the tin. It just increases the thickness. If we change it to 72, then we've just got this big, ugly blob. It doesn't look particularly great. And if we pull this down to zero, it's going to disappear. So have that somewhere in the middle. I like to keep this at around four. Then we'll go down to softness and you can increase the softness. So you can pull that up to 100%. And as you can see, if I change the quality to full, that's going to be very soft around the edge. If I pull this all the way down to zero, it's going to be a hard edge. So it's completely up to you on what you want there. I'm going to leave this at zero for now. Then we've got random seed and that's just going to throw in a few extra waveforms in there for good luck. I'm just going to leave this at zero though. And then we've got inside color and outside color. So if we zoom all the way into the waveform, go to inside color, select this pink box. We'll change this to a nice aqua blue. 
press OK. As you can see, the inside color has changed to that color. Now, if we change the outside color to a different color, so let's go for a darker blue. So we'll go here. You can see it starts like a nice aqua blue and it finishes on the outside as a nice darker blue. So you get this nice fall off effect. And then down here, we've got waveform options. We've got mono left, right. So this is going to react from either the mono. So that's both audio channels, the left audio channel or the right audio channel. So if you're editing to a track which is stereo mixed and there's different things happening in the left and the right audio channel, then this could be an interesting option. Have two different waveforms, one for each different side, or you could just leave it as mono and I'm just going to keep that mono for now. And then next, we've got a way to change the appearance of the waveform. So at the moment, it is set to analog lines. This is the traditional audio waveform effect that you're probably looking for, but we do have the option of changing this to digital. And as you can see, rather than everything being connected, this is generated with lines. So you can really see the difference if I switch back to analog lines. Analog lines, everything is connected. Digital, everything is separate. So we can still see the waveform, but it just looks a little bit different. There's no benefit to using one over the other. It's just which one do you prefer the look of? I personally prefer the look of analog lines because that is your traditional waveform effect, but feel free to change that to digital if you want to. And then last but not least, we have got analog dots, and this is the one that looks completely different to the other two options. So analog dots is essentially putting two dots, one at the top of the audio waveform and one at the bottom of the audio waveform, and it's doing that for every sample of the waveform. So as you can see, if I turn on analog lines, for example, let's look at this point here and we'll go down to this point. So there'll be a dot here and there'll be a dot here. Change it back to analog dots. As you can see, dot here, dot down there. So it's just cutting out all the lines in the middle. Again, if you wanted to do this, you could increase the thickness of this to make those dots stand out a bit more. It's completely up to you, but again, I do prefer the look of the analog lines. And then last but not least, we have got composite on original. So if you've got footage underneath, let's drop this footage underneath. We'll drop that underneath everything. As you can see at the moment, that is turned off, which means it's transparent. If you turn it back on, it is now showing that black video. And there you go. That is how you create an audio waveform and have that waveform react to your music. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you there.